back, everybody. Thank you so much for, for joining us for today's virtual summit on male identified survivors of sexual violence on the path towards healing. This is the workshop that you've been anticipating, that you've been waiting for. We are so happy to be joined by my friend and colleague, Michael Gwynn. And uh, this is The Man I Will Become. I, I love the title um, because I think it, it really, it will be an opportunity for all of us to really explore the process of, of what uh, Marcus talks so eloquently about, about writing, about expressing, about sharing, sharing your story. And that's what today's, what Michael's workshop is about. So Michael is gonna share with us some <clears throat> tips and tricks and some tools that we can incorporate into our own work to help male survivors share their stories by modeling how we ourselves can, can share our stories in terms of our advocacy work, how we came to this work. He's got some just wonderful, amazing writing prompts. I'm looking forward to hearing what, what, people, what people put together. But before we begin, let me share a little bit about Michael with you. Uh, he's got just a phenomenal, a phenomenal bio. So let me share it here. Oh, there he is. So Michael Gwynn is a longtime friend and colleague of mine. I met Michael Gwynn through the Texas Men's Story Project. He was one of our participants three years ago. Uh, this month, actually this week, we hosted the, the live production of uh, the Texas Men's Story Project. So if you're not familiar with that project, it, we, we collaborated with the Men's Story Project to create a series of stories around masculinities, right? And Michael was uh, one of the, the male survivors who participated in that event and shared his story. And so we have been connected to Michael ever since, and we are really grateful for the work that he's doing and for the opportunities that he's, that he, that he's had to collaborate with us. So Michael Gwynn is an amazing individual. He's an award-winning actor, author, poet, storyteller, uh, he is one of the most high energy people, MCs that I know. I mean, if you follow, if you follow Michael on social media, you'll see uh, and you'll hear his amazing work. His presence is just, is, is you know, there, there are no words for just the, the presence that Michael has. Um, so yeah, he holds a bachelor's degree in social work, like many of you are social workers in the room from Stephen F. Austin State University um, and from and he has a master's in social work from UT Arlington. So shout out UT and Stephen F. Austin, right? So uh, he has he is a survivor. Like I said earlier, we're very happy to have Michael. He spoke last year on our panel of male survivors. So Michael, thank you for joining us again this year as a as a presenter. Uh, he's done phenomenal work. Has shared his story. Uh, he he speaks at you know conferences, symposiums all over the country. Uh, again, if you follow Michael on social social media, I highly encourage you to follow him so you can see where he's traveling, what he's doing, uh, you know, and, and imparting the work that he does. And, and really, uh, he has 25 years of experience as a speaker and host of events. So if you are in his hood, right, if you're in the neighborhood, definitely attend one of his events here in Texas or around the country. So um, definitely that's what's so wonderful about following Michael on social media so you can see where he's at, what he's up to. Uh, definitely show up and support his work. Um, he just got a N, uh, NAACP uh, image award, right? He's just like um, voting subcommittee. I don't know if you got an award, Michael, but I see that you're a member and uh, I saw you at that event. So uh, some doing, doing some amazing work in the community around the country and he has appeared in films. He's an actor as well. Uh, he does plays, commercials. I mean, you might have seen him on television. Michael is Michael wears many hats. He's a, he's a jack of all trades, and so we're really happy to have you again, Michael, with us today. And uh, I hope I did your bio justice. I was a little distracted, but <laughs> uh, he he ha he comes prepared. The man comes prepared. He has costumes. He's uh, no, but we're really happy to have you, Michael. Thank you so much for being with us. Like I said, folks, um, hopefully this is also an opportunity for you to, to get some wellness, right? To get some wellness as well. And, um, you know, it, it's a wonderful transition before lunch, and we're really thrilled to have you, Michael. Thank you so much for being with us, and the stage is yours. 
Well, first of all, thank you. Thank you, all of you who are attending. I appreciate y'all. Uh, if you have any questions, y'all go ahead and post them in the chat. I will get to them at the end of this uh, presentation. I got a feeling that a lot of the stuff that I'm talking about is going to be answered. And a lot of the answers will come from you because this is also uh, an interactive uh, workshop, which means you'll have a chance to share your heart. So I'll begin by saying again, thank you, Emiliano and the staff. Y'all doing a great job. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. Uh, I know they're going to enable the screen sharing and I'll be able to share um, my, uh, my, my uh, PowerPoint whenever that time has come. But I just want to read this real quick and just say thank again. Thank you. all I appreciate you. You could have been anywhere else today, but you chose to be here and I appreciate it. First of all, I want to say that I am playing hooky from work. Uh, I took uh, part of the morning off. I work as a permanent supportive housing coach for TRAC here in here in Dallas, Texas. I work with our youth who have aged out of foster care and I also work with our uh, former for our homeless uh, folks from ages 18 to 24 who also have a mental illness. So I have two caseloads, one with our former foster youth up to 21 and one with our 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 at risk, uh, you know, community folks. We call them neighbors and uh, we pay their rent. We do all that stuff. We just, you know, and that job, as you know, comes with the whole gamut of whatever social issues and ills and, you know, whatever past traumas. And so we have to be very creative in how we approach a plethora of problems that they that they present and uh, and help them help them come up with the solutions so that they can, you know, be empowered and know how to go forward in life. So that's what I'm doing. And that, but I'm playing hooky from that today. So uh, well, I say I am. My phone is right here. You know how it is. All right. All right. So. Um, Again, I'm honored to be here. This is the man I will become. Now, first, let me tell you that I'm just a human being using whatever is given to put the bits and pieces of me back together permanently, hopefully. And I'm simply here to share how I use that in my advocacy. Now, what I want you to take away from this is a newfound, newfound appreciation for enabling others to open their hearts and confidently write and share stories that speak their truth and inspire others. Now, I chose the title of the man I will become because for me, until I was able to get on this positive path of my own healing, I felt stuck like my feet were in mud. Stuck back at age six, a little boy still on his knees on that fall day in East Texas. And we all know how it feels to be stuck. And I was. A grown man who couldn't move. And when I did, every step felt like the weight of the world was on my feet. Yeah, I was able to graduate from college and get married and have children and have a house. But because I was still stuck back in my lived trauma, everything I attempted ended in failure. Two divorces, lost jobs, fragile connections with family, friends, my children, and me. I just couldn't seem to escape from the swamps of my own suffering. I had no blueprint for my own healing. But the one thing I was good at was doing the opposite of what was done to me. I became a trial and error specialist. Y'all know how that goes. That was the approach I used to guide my behavior. And with that strategy, I was able to function. So I became a social worker. I tell folks that I didn't choose social work. Social work chose me. And so I excelled at helping people move past their pain and help them get access to resources and turn their tragedies into triumphs. I threw myself into all types of social service projects, worked with hundreds of city governments and nonprofits and schools besides working my own full-time job. I got awards and, and accolades and notoriety. They called me Mr. Humanity, but I had no balance no sense of self-care, and people just got tired of waiting on this lone wolf to be the man in the house, to be mature, reliable, and responsible. But I didn't know how. And after years of what I thought was successful advocacy, I realized that I had fooled myself into believing that I was healed through my success at helping others. But it was just a lie, a lie I was living. Success on the outside, a disaster on the inside. And when you're living a lie, sooner or later, it catches up with you. And then a time came when I could no longer run. One day while working as a CPS investigator here in Fort Worth, I came in from a long day in the field. I slumped down in my chair. I put my head down and started crying. And when I lifted my head, I had a pen in my hand. And the very first thing I said, wrote was, what good is my master's degree if I can't be the master of me? I've been writing ever since. 
It comforted me. It gave me a place to lay down these demons so that I would no longer take them home with me. And then something incredible happened. I got an email from a friend who referred me to some group. Um, uh, maybe you heard of it, uh, TASA. Yeah, that's that's the group. So I emailed this guy, y'all might know him, named Emiliano. Yeah, him, yeah, who was working with the Men's Storytelling Project. This experience connected the dots for me socially, mentally, and emotionally. Being part of that movement not only gave me a platform, it provided me with a community where I was no longer the lone wolf. And those workshops with Emiliano and Dr. Josie and all those other men healing put me on this put me on this final path where I was mud free and it saved my life, y'all. And now I'm happy with the man I have become. Since then, I've been facilitating creative workshops for youth, adults, and adult professionals who provide social services just like you do. Today, it's all about advocacy, y'all. In a little while, in a little while here, we, well, we're going to, uh, we're going to engage in some creative writing ourselves, all right? I want to know how you've helped someone heal, even if that someone was you, all right? Now, let me see if I can share this screen here. I don't see a screen sharing here for me yet. Um, I don't see it, so I, 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 I will, we'll skip that. I don't see how I can screen, I'm sure, but it's all right because I'm good at talking and I'm good to go. All right. So and you're uh, you're, good, you're, go. you're good now, Michael. I appreciate the shout out. And I'll, I'll, yeah, I'll, 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 yeah, you should be able to share. If you right, the, I, at, the, at the bottom of your screen, there's a little panel that says share screen. Hopefully, you see it. I don't see it for this. I don't see it. And it's all right, folks. I, we're going to get it, y'all. I don't see it. And I did see it at first, but I don't see it now. And I'm telling you, it's a combination of a bad, of a low grade Zoom plan and a, and a, and a, and a cheap computer. But it's all right. We're here. We're going to do no. what we do, right? <laughs> we want to make sure you're able to share your screen. And like I said, if you want to send me the slides, I can share them. Like if you want to email yeah, them I, to me, I can I can yeah. talk while you while you while you do this, Michael, and you can share you can send them to me and yeah, I can let me, share them. Let me do that real quick because I want I, yeah. this next part needs though. Yeah, let me send them That's, to you right now. They're important. Yeah, we 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 know how to roll. Like, thank you for the shout out. I just want to remind folks, and I appreciate this opportunity, Michael, to remind folks to please take care of themselves. Again, at any time, if you need any support, Tanya is still available. Uh, please please reach out. To Tanya, let any of the staff know that are in the chat. They'll have this beautiful background. If you need any support, reach out to them. They're going to engage you in the chat. So uh, at any point, please reach out to them if you need any support, any information, or any assistance. So uh, yeah, definitely take care of yourself, and we'll we'll get Michael set up here. Waiting for the email, Michael. Yeah, I, I sent it. It should be coming through. Hey man, you know, internet is slow. Inter internet is is a, is a tricky thing. So I will Spectrum. wait. And, Spectrum. Yeah. Spectrum, I'm kidding. I'm hey kidding. Man. <laughs> <laughs> shout out to shout out to all the internet providers. Yeah, I'm kidding. I'm, we're I'm kidding. kidding. No, Spectrum. I, mean, I, I love it. I mean, we're we're glad that we have internet, right? So it's like we're we're very we're very fortunate in that way and very privileged to be able to host today. There it is. I got it, Michael. Yeah. You got it. I so got when you get, so all I you gotta got do you. is, yeah, just go to the advocates, you know, advocates um, screen. I mean, uh, slide, and we're good to go. And we we'll and voila, we're back. How y'all doing? Uh, by the way, my cash app. I'm kidding. <laughs> <laughs> yes, uh, folks, you got all you, right. You Woo! you gotta you gotta support my my brother here any way that he that that we can. Let's see here. You lit a fire, brother. I'm going to tell you right now, you lit a fire. Amen. That's the one we want. I appreciate you, there man. We go. Um, there we go. Thank you. I was up at 3 o'clock in the morning doing this stuff, y'all. You know, I'm old school. I know. All right. Well, let's, 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 let me, let me, I don't know what I did here. Because, you know, I'm, That's all right. I'm not, I'm not used to this. Uh, let's see. You, me. <laughs> you know, I, I mean. It's so funny because I, I use, uh, like many of you, I, I use, uh, I don't know why it's doing that. Do you guys you see the yeah. switch on your display settings, Emiliano? The the yeah. right there. Switch swap the view. Crystal is underpaid. She is underpaid. She's amazing. <laughs> Thank you, Crystal. And again, folks, this is real. This is real life, right? And, and next uh, week, Emiliano might be telling me, Crystal, just push that button to share the sound right there. So <laughs> <laughs> again, right. this is a this is a hard it's a hard subject, right, Michael? I mean, I was like yes, I, really grateful. We're really grateful to Marcus for sharing his story and 
It yes, can be we are. At times it can be difficult to hear. So again, some levity, some laughter is yeah. okay. So yes, thank you, Michael. I'll, I'll, I'll change the slides for you. So just let me know what you need, brother. Folks, I went through a lot to be able to get to the point where I'm happy and able to, you know, offer just, uh, you know, more humorous side of myself. Uh, people don't know the violence I had to get to to get to this piece. You know what I'm saying? And and that's here I am. So I'm, I'm here to share that and how I got there and how it how, you know, coincidental and probably a miracle that uh, my writing and my sharing uh, came at a time where I linked with. Emiliano and and the uh, and Tasa and the Men's Story Telling Project. It just all kind of came together, and, be, and since that time, y'all, about three and a half years now, uh, three years now, I've I've just been going. I was writing, but not at this level where it facilitated healing and and, and inspired others to want to write and share and heal and get on that path. And um, Marcus mentioned it, you know, the writing that is the writing. That there it is, right there. So advocacy. I want you, if you don't know, I've got, you know, what advocacy, advocacy meant, means to me. I put those things up there. But what's your definition of advocacy? Why don't you write in the chat, what is advocacy to you? Here's mine. Advocates are powerful people. Being present, listening, and validating are some of the most helpful skills advocates have that survivors are not likely to get anywhere else. They provide practical, to, practical tools, activities, and resources to assist them in their work. I'm sorry, with their work with survivors of sexual violence. The survivor's advocate's role is to help the survivor consider the options that provide them with the information necessary to make informed decisions. Once the decision is made, the advocate is responsible for supporting the survivor in the implementation of that decision. It is my hope that this workshop is a springboard for you to embrace your creativity and add this as an emotional activity in in collaboration with your own unique skills to further personalize your approach as an advocate. Because we all know there is no way to heal from sexual trauma. Psychotherapy, when they say there is, psychotherapy and support groups might be great healing tools for a survivor you are working with, but they are not a replacement for what you can offer as an advocate. Self-determination and autonomy Feeling heard and social support are important factors in healing that advocates can provide. Additionally, advocates are in a unique position to engage with survivors from different cultures who may require specialized cultural support outside of therapy or in addition to therapy. While there are significant areas of overlap between a therapist and an advocate, it is because of those differences that they can both be important in someone's healing journey. Next slide, please. Got it? We're going to talk about triggers, y'all. Triggers, and, and you can also, and again, keep using that. I, I hear you, Marissa. I can't wait to read the chat. Triggers. You may have your own definition of triggers. Whatever you want to do, put it in the chat. We love your interaction. I know we're reading it. I can't wait to go back and read it myself. But this is what I wrote for triggers. Triggers are automatic responses connected to your past sexual abuse or assault that suddenly rushes to the present. Certain acts, smells, words, perhaps even a tone of voice can act as a trigger, as triggers that bring up images and feelings from the past. When you're in the middle of being triggered, it may diff be difficult to distinguish from the past and the present. That was Dr. Stacey Haynes, uh, author of The Survivor's Guide to Sex. Survivors often can use help figuring out what is going on in their brains and bodies, often asking advocates, is this normal? Triggers are a common part of recovery from trauma. And advocates will need to be familiar with triggers and can work with survivors to plan how they will respond when triggers come up and what strategies they might try, especially when sharing their stories. And this is the reason why I offered this, y'all. OK. All right. All right. Which brings us to the next slide. Here we are. We are going to now get into um, sharing some stories about your advocacy. Now, here's where we will explore the art of creative writing. Marcus mentioned it already. It is a very powerful tool to help kind of ground yourself where you can just lay down your burdens, you know, and leave it on paper and don't take it home and don't take it into the next, you know, next activity. We'll use storytelling because it offers a creative approach that provides a platform where survivors can speak informally about what they went through and in doing so, create a culturally familiar space that survivors can use to share the experience of what happened to them. 
The importance of sharing stories among survivors helps to let go of the past and move on and gives us the ability as advocates to manage difficult emotions and thoughts. It creates a reflective process needed to help people to understand their collective wounds, the negative and positive changes that have occurred. Getting your feelings down has huge mental and physical benefits, y'all. Instead of feeling overwhelmed by everything, you will have a much better idea of where you are now and more importantly, how to get to where you're going, that path to healing. In fact, it has been scientifically proven that you are 42% more likely to achieve your goals when you write them down, even if the goal is simply writing them down. A familiar environment and method of sharing information, such as storytelling, helps in enabling survivors to open up. It is important to give uninterrupted time and space for survivors to speak of tragic events. Through storytelling, one is able to obtain testimonies which can be carefully documented. Aside from the advocate gaining insight, storytelling also strengthens survivors because of peer support. Them sharing their stories can also help advocates to understand and support survivors better. Now, who's heard of the empowerment model of healing? Just hit that little hand raise if you have. Anybody heard of that? Anybody heard of that? All right. Safety, remembrance, and mourning, and reconnection. Those are the three um, components of the empowerment model of healing. Now, we're at our writing prompts. And before I get into our writing prompts, if there are, if there are any questions about anything, I'm, I've got a feeling that a lot more of those questions will be answered by you just engaging in this experience with us, okay? What I want you to do is I want you to choose one of these writing prompts. I have, when I was little, the advocate I will become. I remember. I hear you. Meet you. Where, I'll meet you where you are. You pray on that where you are. I was where you were. I am here for you. So you choose one of those and you apply them to your, uh, just pick a story, uh, the, 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 the pick a moment or an experience or an occasion where you've helped and let's share about it. Let's write about it. Just be creative and tell the story. Okay. That's all I want you to do. I'm going to give you 10 minutes just 10. I want to stay on time. You know what I'm saying? Because we got lunch coming up. I don't want to mess with lunch. I know how that is, how important that is, the self-care. All right. All right. So we want to make sure that you have an opportunity to share. And I know there's a lot of people, so we may not get to everybody, but we want to, we want everybody to at least choose a prompt and write. So we'll leave those prompts on the screen. I'm going to give you 10 minutes. I don't know if we need any music or anything. You want to turn off your camera and write for a second. Uh, we'll have a timer there. I'm pretty sure. Yes. You got it. Yeah, Michael, I, that's that's a great that's a great suggestion. I'll, I'll definitely play some music here for folks so that you can kind right. of get into into the zone. But before we do that, I wanted to check with folks if if you have any questions, uh, definitely yeah. drop them in the chat, and our chat, our staff will call those out. So, uh, if you have any questions about this process, yes, um, or the prompts themselves, or what what Michael's asking for us to do in the next ten minutes, drop that in the chat. Right. And so, again, simply all you're doing is choosing one of these prompts. When I was little, the advocate I will become. I remember. I hear you. Meet you where you are. I was where you were. I am here for you. Choose one. And you all you're going to do is just write a simple story from your experiences in either advocacy or on your path to healing. If you are a survivor, that's all you're doing. I'm giving you 10. Usually I give only like five minutes, you know, because I don't want anybody to, you know, because I, I, I want you to share. So I, usually after five minutes, people are like, I don't know if I want to share. But at 10, I, I hope that you'll, you know, I hope that you'll see that you're that it's OK. And this this is a safe, familiar space. You've already been here this morning. You've heard Marcus. You're going to hear more people after me. So this is a very, very safe, it's a familiar space for you to tell your story. Are there any questions? Yeah, there yeah, is yeah. one from Alicia. She said, do you want it written in the chat? Do you want folks to share what they write in the chat? Or do you want them to keep it to themselves right now? I, I, I want you to keep it to yourselves because I want to actually hear your audio. I want to hear you share your story. Yes, there is the other part. I hope that you feel safe enough in this wonderful space that uh, Tasa has built where you will share what you've written. Now, you're not being graded and it's not a contest. We all just being ourselves, all right? Being our authentic selves, just like we want our survivors to be, okay? So you don't have to write in the chat. You just you grab a pen and paper or write on an iPad or, you know, write on a separate uh, device. And then in about 10 minutes here, well, nine minutes and 10 seconds, we will uh, we will give you a chance to share. OK, any other questions? 
And so, and you don't have to do it. I'm hoping that you will, because I I have a story, and I'm going to share my story as well. All right. So we're in this together. All right. Cool. And if there are any questions, I will I will I can uh, answer those in the chat while you're writing. All right. Time has already started. I'll I'll turn on some music here. Yeah, DJ Emiliano, give it up for yourself, DJ Emiliano. There it is right there. <laughs> All right, folks. I try, I, I try, I try. You did a great job, man. Thank you, sir. Yeah, you did a great job. All right, Thank here you. we are. Here we are. So what I want to do, what I want to do is, and this is where a lot of the conversation will come, come out right here. Uh, I want to know who's willing to share. And if you are, simply just write your name in the chat. And then we will go in no uncertain order. I will just write the names down here and we'll go from there. So if you're willing to share, just write your name down and uh, we'll get as many as possible, y'all. And don't be afraid. And if you are a little apprehensive, you don't have to be. All right. We are all family right now. We're all here for the same reason. And we are all here to support each each other and that's what it's all about so don't be afraid to share okay so go ahead and write your names in, in the chat we'll get those names down and we'll go from there okay cool all right oh somebody put their oh what that? What that? what's going on i thought i saw a huge writing in the chat if there is so i would love to read that is that okay if i read that what somebody's written or is it okay all right okay well i, I see you i see you alicia 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 i'm sorry alicia jessica lacy brenda who else wants some? Who else wants to jump in there? Sorry, just grab the pen here. <laughs> no, you, you in our in our staff, our, our staff will call those folks out when sort of in order, so you yeah. don't have to keep track of that, Michael but, yourself. But no, 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 no I, this, I, I love it. It's part of you what love I do. It. It's 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 what you do, right? You're an MC. Uh, you right, do your right. thing, so I'm gonna let I'm gonna let you do your thing. But if you need any help, let our let our folks know. And thank you so I'm much, gonna, especially gonna... to the folks who just joined us. Thank you for joining us. You you still have time to do the writing prompts. If you go up in the chat, you can see the writing prompts that Michael asked folks to do. If you want to participate, you can you can take a minute to to write your piece, and then you're welcome to share it now or later. Uh, but yeah, go for it, Michael. All right, thank you so much. And and as we add names here, uh, just know that feel free to jump in any time. But I have Alicia, Jessica, Lacey, Brenda, and Art. And if there are other all other names that I've missed, if y'all can let me know, I'm just gonna call yes. them out. So this because I have yeah. Who Michael, we got? you missed Jane Claiborne, Sophia Masias. Right. All right, and I got them. Perfect. All right, I got them. If you see any more, you let me know, okay? All right, so here's how I want to do it. I'm going to call you your name in no uncertain order. You're going to come up. You're going to tell us who you are and what you do, and then you're going to tell us the prompt that you chose, okay? That's the reason why I wanted to call you, call you out, okay? All right, so I'm going to go ahead and start. I hope you don't mind. Brenda, welcome. Go ahead and unmute and let us, let, let us, let us hear it, girl. What, Brenda, where are you from? You ready, Brenda? Sorry. Um, yes. I'm from Brownwood, Texas. I work for the art. I'm the sexual assault legal liaison. I just started a support group, had the first one last night. And um, the prompt I chose was, um, I will become the advocate that we will, I forget okay. what it was. I will become the advocate that will always be aware of triggers. I will become the advocate that can guide others through their journey, knowing it's their own timeline. I will become the advocate that will find new ways to bring survivors together to be able to help them talk to others as part of their healing journey. I will become the advocate that will be the person to create a safe space for survivors to express feelings, explore coping mechanisms, and work through their their own trauma. Um, the, I will become the advocate that will be the person where the survivors feel that they are being heard. I will become the advocate. It is the one that will always stay grounded knowing that I'm just a mere vessel in a survivor's journey and give them um, the credit for their own accomplishments. That's it. Oh, good job, good job. Brenda, how how'd that feel? How did that feel saying that? That felt amazing. It felt amazing and empowering. 
That's what we want. That's manifestation at the highest level and that's what I, we appreciate about doing writing prompts sometimes people don't think of them they're very powerful but these are also things you can use with people that you work with same kind of tool and it's just as easy as it flowed from you it'll it, trust me it'll they'll be amazing how easy it, it, it yeah how easy it is to open up that's just a, a door that you open by doing that so definitely definitely thank you so much i appreciate you thank you brenda thank you i appreciate you you're welcome. Appreciate you. All right. Coming up next. And I hope she's ready. Lacey, are you ready? I guess. <laughs> yeah, you got this, girl. You got this, Lacey. I you got this. Sure. I started typing my name and then I hesitantly click enter. And then I was like, okay, there's no going back now. <laughs> <laughs> hey, there it is. There it is. Welcome, welcome to the world. All right, Lacey, okay, where, where, who, are you, who are you and where are you from? Uh, I'm from Ottawa County, so I work at the prosecutor's office. I'm a victim advocate assistant. Uh, I primarily handle juvenile delinquency cases, so all the little did kiddos. You, did you say Ottawa? Yes. Oh, wait. Oh, wait. Welcome to America. No, I'm kidding. I'm oh, no, Michigan. Michigan. <laughs> oh, for the say, I didn't know. I thought it was thing about Canada. I didn't know. Okay. No. All right. No. All right. Good morning. <laughs> well, welcome anyway, and we appreciate it. All right. The mic okay. is yours. Okay, I chose the prompt, I was where you were. Um, just a forewarning, I am a survivor as well. So I kind of did it more towards that. So I don't want to like trigger anyone. Um, but I put, I was where you were, alone, hurt, angry with no idea how I was going to move on. I was where you were, a victim of sexual assault with no voice to control it, crying in silence, wishing the pain would go away. I was where you were, but I only got here because of you. Um, this was specifically for the perpetrator of me. He had been victimized as a child and he uh, repeated the cycle, but I've since healed from it and I've forgiven him. Beautiful. Thank you so Thank much. You. I Man, that, that was awesome. That was awesome. And think that what made you decide to share? I know that you accidentally clicked your name in there. But <laughs> what made you decide to pick that prompt? Um, well, I think because it was more gauged at my own experience, I wanted other people to feel more comfortable in sharing their own, especially in this sort of a setting. Um, obviously, we're all here in support of male survivors. Um, some of us in advocacy, some of us as survivors. So um, understandably, it's a hard position to share your story at times. So I wanted to kind of help as well. Thank you so much, Lacey. Thank you. All right. Go Ottawa. Michigan. Yeah, go Ottawa. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> All right. Thank you. All right. This is that. Listen, we we need to be happy and walk into our healing and understand that we don't always have to be stuck. I was stuck. Now I'm not. So we're gonna keep it going. Really, so Brenda, Lacey, y'all are knocking it. Y'all knocked it out the park. And if anybody else wants to join in, and you see that it's very simple, very easy, but still very powerful. We're gonna keep it going. Sophia, how you doing? I'm doing well. How are you? <laughs> I'm good. I'm good. Uh, where are you from, Sophia? So I'm from El Paso, Texas. I work with Center of Hope. I'm a victim advocate and we primarily serve youth who have been trafficked. So whether that's labor trafficked or sex trafficked. Um, and yeah, that's a little bit about me. All right, thank you so much. The mic is yours. Thank you. So I used the prompt uh, when I was little. Also trigger warning, because um, I know this is a safe space and everything, but you know, just a little disclaimer. Uh, so I'm a survivor. So this prompt when I was little really resonated with me. And um, I usually uh, use writing. So that way it really helps me. And I'm also a poet. So I'm going to go ahead and read what I wrote. Uh, when I was little, I was full of surprises, curious of the world around me, imagining the person I would be. Held so much hope in my young eyes, wouldn't know what would come as a surprise. A family member in a disguise would hurt me as I was just a little girl enjoying life. When I was little, I wish there was someone to comfort me, to believe in the words I would share as it became part of my story. And that's something I had to conceal from my family. When I was little, I grew up fast. Where did the time pass? wouldn't get help until years later where I was hushed and felt something was wrong. 
when I was little. And that's all. <laughs> Woo! Yeah, your hands, hands, everybody, hands. Great job, great job. Thank you so much. All right, what made you share that one? I mean, I know the prompt was there, but what made you go that direction? You could have went any, you could have said, when I was little, I liked ice cream, but you decided to do that. What made you feel safe enough to do that? I really wanted to, well, it, like I mentioned, the prompt really resonated with me a lot. Um, and normally when I ever I hear like, anything that has to do with the inner child that really brings me back to like my writing and how um, I know my younger self would really be proud of where I am now and the journey I've been through. And this is why I do the work that I do um, because, well, I've, I've seen youth in those situations. I serve them, um, you know, through our direct services and I, in the past few years throughout my professional career um i've been like a sexual violence coordinator i've been a, a sexual trauma healing coordinator so i've seen both sides where um you know that individual has been through that experience and needs an advocate but i've also been in the other side where it's okay where do we go from here how do we heal and so i gotten really inspired over the years to continue to write and I think that's what's really put me to to write about it because I, I truly believe in it and having others to also find their ways or different yeah. forms of healing. Well, thank you so much. I appreciate it. It was very powerful. Folks, if you don't mind, let them know, let them know in the chat that you heard that they that they heard you. All right. That you heard them and let them know uh, how you feel about what they what they had to say. Uh, and again, thank you, Sophia. I appreciate it. And I hope I get a chance. I'm in Fort Worth. I'm a poet as well. I do. A, I host eight different open mics all across this thing. So maybe I pass with Cross. And again, thank you for your wonderful, wonderful outpouring. All right, we're going to keep it going. It's been powerful. I love it. I know we got the Q&A stuff coming up. You got questions. I, I know I will share a story as well, but we're going to keep it going. And I appreciate it so much. All right, here we go. I'm going to welcome, and I hope he's ready. I hope. It's like, I, I hope he's ready. Art, Art, are you there? Hello. Hey, Art. Hey, and welcome. So, my name is Art Miguelis. I'm a, a former combat infantryman, and my prompt is, I remember. So I remember resorting to being inebriated throughout my time at the University of Colorado, Denver, to earn my degree in film and television. I was triggered when someone placed a lavalier microphone on me and asked, where do you want me to touch you? I used my resiliency training in the army to help compartmentalize and complete the task of reading from the teleprompter for television studio production class. Once I finished, I walked up to him and word vomited with emotions on how I didn't like what he did because I'm a combat infantryman and he told me, calm down killer. I still hadn't processed the pain I experienced in the United States Army. And at the time, the experience was unspeakable. I remember I used to reach out to platoon mates who were there at the welcome home party where I was attacked and I was met with silence until I spoke out in 2020. Thank you so much for sharing, brother. I know that was difficult, man. Thank you for trusting this space this moment man uh i am also a veteran uh eight years and i understand i feel you thank you for your service brother uh and and again i use some of that as well and and, and man so tell me how did it feel sharing that here in front of all these people man how did that feel art empowering a relief of yes, sir. tension yeah being able to that's that's what talk about it yeah go ahead being yeah. able to talk about it really um, like release the stress and the tension that i used to hold on to and just keep silent man i really appreciate the bravery and i appreciate the transparency and the vulnerability uh you, you know folks in the chat are showing you love 
Uh, we want to continue this. I know folks in the chat are also posting some of the things they've written, and we really appreciate just the outpouring. This is what I hoped for when I came up with this. I had some to right, I had some totally different plan until I talked to Miliano, and he uh, he specifically, you know, wanted me to gear it towards advocacy or self advocacy, and so I chose these prompts. My heart just felt that that's what needed to be be out there as a someone to connect to and grab onto to give them the opportunity we so you know how it is we go to these workshops and these summits and we and we take so much in we have to have a way somewhere during the day in in that in that summit to let it let it come out and know that it's okay to do so because when i didn't do that uh basketball became tackle basketball flag football became tackle flat football i was so angry i had all these frustrations so that's why i wanted to offer for this and I always try to offer this uh, for folks. So I really appreciate you, man. Thank you so much for that. Thank you for doing All right, folks, you heard, all right, you're welcome, man. You stay here, don't you go, no, I mean, I mean, you know, don't stay on this. I, I know you gotta go back off your mic, but I'm just saying, stay here. That was all y'all, just... that wasn't that powerful? Wasn't that powerful? Michael, before we continue, because folks are sharing very personally and I really appreciate it. I just want to remind remind folks and, and folks have done an amazing job of reminding each other. Your staff are available. Advocates are available in the chat if you feel like you need to talk. I also want to remind folks, and I apologize for not saying this earlier. I know we're trying to create a safe space and we'll we'll determine how we want to share this particular session or this this part of the, the, the thing, but we are recording this for the purposes of sharing it out in the future. And I should have said that before we started. So I apologize for that. So please let us know. And if you're not comfortable with your story being shared in the recording, please let us know that so that we don't release we 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 edit that out if we if 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 it's possible. But I just wanted to just to remind folks that this is being recorded, uh, with the with the intention of sharing out to with with the larger advocacy community. And so uh, please let us know communicate communicate with with us or our staff in the chat if you're not comfortable with your story being shared. But if you are planning on sharing your story, just to keep that in mind, and again, if you're not comfortable, you have the right to choose what you wanna disclose. So um, thank you everybody who is sharing so deeply and thank you, Michael, for facilitating um, this storytelling. Thank you, and I hope it's all right to do so, Miliano. I, you know, you never know when you create these moments what's going to happen. But so far, it's been very safe, very powerful, and very, you know, sort of therapeutic. So I appreciate you for letting them know about the recording aspect. That's some. That's that's not me, y'all. I'm, I'm a speaker. I I don't handle the uh, admin stuff. So I appreciate that, and I hope that you will know that your stories can inspire other people. So you know, I hope you'll consider those stories being heard beyond this platform. Uh, but it's completely up to you, and and. Again, Again, safety and self-care is all it's what it's about. And that's what we're going to continue doing. All right. So I've got a, I've got a few more names here if you're, if you're all ready. All right. We're going to keep it going. Folks, again, please use that chat to let folks know uh, that, you know, you're there. I hear you. OK, Lori, are you ready? How you doing? I'm great, Michael. Thank you so much for letting me have a few moments to speak. Um, yes, I'm Lori. I'm Lori Watson. I'm from Dallas, Texas. I actually am um, an attorney. I exclusively have represented survivors of sexual abuse and assault for more than 25 years. Um, I just, this whole presentation has just really inspired me to try to do better on a variety of things that you've brought up and talked about, Michael, including inspiring me to be a better listener because one of the most important things I can do is hear what survivors have to say and try to process it so I can help them in the best way that I can. Um, I, I really am, am inspired by this program so much and I have to express to all the survivors all the time how much I always believe them and always their trust in me is just um, unbelievable. And so I just always want to thank them so much for um, letting me be one of the first people sometimes in their whole life that they've even told their stories to, and that I truly believe them and um, just try to express that as much as I can. And, and this is inspiring me to even be better about that. Um, I always try to provide them resources, even if it's a case or something that I can't undertake, I try to make sure that I listen to them and um, try to empower them as much as I can to continue with their story and to continue with their journey 
Um, we try to help as many people as we can. And like I said, it, whether we can or we can't, we try to provide them more resources. TASA has been a wonderful place that we have um, gotten a lot of help and a lot of resources from in the past. TASA has been on the front line as far as trying to get the laws changed in Texas to help survivors. And that's been, they've been a huge instrumental part in getting those laws changed. And we have been still working on that continuously. And that's a goal for this next coming upcoming session. And um, I know TASA is gonna be there supporting that too. And that's so important. Um, I basically, like I said, the resources are so important. I know to survivors, we try to walk them through that and we try to help them um, make sure that they make reports criminally also. And so there's a report out there, even if the case can't move forward criminally, I believe one of the other survivors had talked about how um, you know, it, maybe the statute of limitations had run criminally, but that that individual could still testify in the prosecution of the support of the other person's case. So we always try to walk hand in hand and make sure that it, it does get reported that way if the survivor is so inclined. And we just want to try to do everything we can to make sure that the perpetrator is stopped in their actions. So that's that's a big, important piece of it. Again, the survivor has to be ready. So we normally try to connect them with counseling resources first and make sure that you know they're in a good place to come forward with everything before we take any steps forward. But I just wanna thank Emiliano and Michael and everybody else who's come forward today and, and talking and sharing. It makes such a huge difference. Thank you so much. Wow, you were ready to go. You were ready. You've been sitting back there uh, ready to go, aren't you, girl? I see you. <laughs> oh, well, I, it, I'm just it's it's a calling for me. I mean, the whole the whole thing is just it's so close to my heart. And I, I just I just want to thank everybody for all your hard work. This is such a team effort of everything going on here. And, um, you know, like I said, I, I'm just um, it empowers me so much. So I, I'm very grateful to be able to participate. Thank you again. Thank you so much, folks. That was Lori. You heard of Lori Watson, attorney. There it is right there. All right. Thank you, Lori. We're going to keep it going. Remember now, if you got any questions, hold them to the end. The staff will moderate that, will manage that part of it, y'all. Uh, again, this is something that I do all over the country. I just try to open the space and make sure it's safe, supportive, and it's so glad not to be, I'm so honored uh, to be here and not be by myself. Usually it's me trying to manage, but I've got Tassa behind me, y'all. And I'm going to tell you right now, when you got Tassa behind you, it, it, you, you can't go wrong, y'all. You can't go wrong. Tassa for president, if there is a collective that can be a president, that's all I've got to say. All right, we're going to keep it going, y'all. Coming up next, I want to uh, I want to show love. Well, give it up for Jessica. Jessica, the mic is yours. Hi, um, so my name is Jessica Rhodes. I'm a uh, primary prevention coordinator for the Resource and Crisis Center of Galveston County. Uh, so really my job is to go out into the community and go to libraries and community centers and really just try to bring prevention on sexual assault to anybody who's willing to listen, you know, because sometimes the political climate in Texas can be really difficult for that. Um, but I went ahead and chose the, uh, the prompt, the advocate I will become. So I said, uh, uh, the advocate I will become will be inclusive. Uh, survivors need uh, needs can range, whether it be their story, gender identity, cultural difference, or sexual orientation. However, the advocate I will become isn't worried about differences. I will see survivors as human first, uh, humans first and develop ways to help them as individuals. I believe I already try to do this, but just as the path to healing can be winding, so can an advocate's journey in aiding the path to healing. I will be honest, I will be caring, and I will be an advocate first. Ooh, good job. Hands, hands, hands. Amazing, amazing. How, how'd that feel? How'd that feel? It felt really good. Uh, I was thinking while I was writing it, this is just a big positive affirmation to myself and, and the work that we do as advocates. You know, I, I feel like a lot of the times as an advocate and, and a prevention coordinator, you know, you hear a lot of stories that sometimes I feel like just rip out your heart, you know, but hearing those stories don't, doesn't make your job any less, you know, important, you know? And so you need to keep telling yourself positive things about why you're doing this job and, 
you know, being inclusive to me is so important just because, again, you know, in Texas, sometimes it can be really difficult to find those spaces for communities, you know, but just positive affirmations consistently will make your life uh, as an advocate so much better. Well, thank you so much for all the work you do. And thank you all for all the work you've done. That was incredible, incredible affirmation. Manifest it, girl. And thank you so much. Thank you. You're welcome. All right. Y'all make sure y'all don't throw those away. Keep those. Build on those. All right. That's what I tell all my students and participants. Keep whatever you whatever you've written down and build on that and use those as kind of just a guide to, and, and a reminder of this is who you are and this is where I came from and this is where I'm going. That's what you should do. OK. All right. I'm going to keep it going. We got a few left. Y'all again, I want to try and stay on time and I want to have time for Q&A. Uh, next, we have Alicia. Alicia, the mic is yours. All right, thank you. So I am a shelter operations manager for domestic violence and sexual abuse shelter, Hill Country Crisis Council. So that's what okay. I do now. All right, so what I, the one I prompt I picked was I remember. Okay, I'm gonna try it. I will get emotional. I'm gonna get emotional. Okay, I remember what it is to be weary, to be so weary of carrying the memories of the heavy load of trauma, trauma upon trauma, being told I was so lucky, blessed with my children, with my job, but feeling an imposter because I told others of hope and healing, sorry, but I did not truly feel it was possible to find a place beyond all of the ruminating. Even as a CPI, CPI investigator, or when I was an advocate, or even a forensic interviewer, I carried a box of shame that was so heavy, I was tired. I'm sorry. I was so tired because I was not able to embrace my own healing. Sorry. It's all right. Don't apologize. Go in, girl. Go in. What had happened to me happened to my children. I swore they were they would be safe. But when there is evil living in your in your family, and wolves in sheep's clothing, there's only failure. No one shamed me like I shamed myself. And so I stand before people now to tell them I am not here to judge. I'm I'm here to listen, to, to believe, and to tell you there is a place beyond that shame me on this soul deep weariness and I want to say thank you to anybody for letting me part of their journey as they too find a way to set down that shame and to move beyond that weariness that goes all the way to your soul all right stay here don't go nowhere stay with me there, there you go there's a smile See that and smile comes immediately. You put it on paper, you leave it there. Again, <laughs> as today, so you're in the position that I am. I, I'm working as a CPS investigator. I'm taking care of all these kids and doing this, but I've right. got my own shame. I've got my own, right. So we're that, that so there you go. There you go. So that's why I offer this as an opportunity for you to do yes. that. Hey, so you feel hey, you feel better. I okay. As you carry that Thank for you so, so much. many years. They carry that for so many years. I've gone so many years setting that aside, not crying, not being emotional. You know, I've worked, as I said, all of those jobs. I've been a CPI worker. I have been a family advocate. I've been a forensic interviewer. And now I run a women's domestic violence shelter. And I'll tell you, this job is more real. I have to be more real than I've ever been in my life. And part of that was looking inside and finally, finally letting myself be part of that healing, if that makes sense. You know, it because does. You, you go day to day focusing on other people's trauma, yep. other people's burdens that like right. this crying is new to me because my my acceptance of this is very new. So yeah. I appreciate the space to get to bring that to you. And again, I apologize. <laughs> Don't apologize. Ever apologize. That's part of your healing is to do what you're doing. And we appreciate you for being brave enough to do it here. Again, we that's what we just did. We created a safe and supportive community. That's what we're doing here. That's what this whole thing about. That's what TASA is about, is creating safe 
communities, safe spaces where it could be normal. It's normalcy for us to go ahead and say, all right, it, I, I, it happened. And here I am. Yes. Still this. I'm still here. I'm still, and I'm going to do this and I'm going to do that. So, yeah. So, thank you so much for being, yep, you just, don't, you ain't going to make me cry, girl. It ain't going to happen. I'll cover my face first. I'll cover my face first, okay? Thank you so much. Thank you. Yeah. You're welcome. All right, there it is. Uh, read that chat, Alicia. They, they are going crazy in the chat for you. We're going to keep it going. we got a couple more, y'all. Uh, and who coming up next? We're going to have uh, Miss Jane. Jane, welcome to the mic. Yes, thank you so much. Um, my name You're is Jane Claiborne. I work at uh, uh, Sexual and Domestic Violence Crisis Center in Prince George, Virginia. Been there for uh, about 18 years now. And so I chose the prompt I hear you because I've worked my whole 18 years with adult survivors of childhood sexual abuse. And I think them having the courage to come forward and tell their story is just so important. So I wrote, um, wrote this as though I were talking to a client. Um, I will believe you. I am honored that you feel safe enough with me to tell me your story. Your story will not be too much for me. I will give you time to speak without interrupting. I will sit with you in silence when you need time. Tell your story as you are able. Cry if you need to cry. Stop for a break when you need a break. Your story belongs to you and there is no right or wrong way to tell it. Know that you are not alone. As difficult as giving voice to your experience is, know that by doing so, you are taking back control. You are empowering yourself. You are saying, see me, hear me, I am important and what was done to me is important. I hear you. I hear your pain. I hear your struggle. I hear your fear and uncertainty. I hear your desire to heal. I hear you and I believe you. Awesome job, Jane. You somebody so you you, you rode into that assignment, didn't you, Gary? Over there, all the way from Virginia. Thank you so much. How how you feel? How you feel about sharing that? I feel good. I I just love my job so much, and I just it means so much to me when people do come to us and they share their story and just take that first step. It's so important, and and I have never been more fulfilled in a job than I am in this job. Well, it sounds like it looks like you're very happy doing what you're doing, being advocate number one in Virginia. Yeah, matter of fact, they might have to do a new state office for advocates. <laughs> and that, there you are. There it is. There you are. You walked into that position. Thank you again for sharing. We appreciate you. You're welcome. All right. That was Jane, y'all. Show Jane love. Oh, Jane, look at that chat. They're just showing you love in the chat. Again, when you do these types of powerful and sometimes heavy conversations during a summit, you have to have a way to release, in my opinion. And I'm so glad that Tasa allowed me to provide that opportunity for y'all and, and to illuminate the fact that you are doing the work. You are doing the work. And you and, and again, the work didn't choose. You didn't choose the work. The work chose you. This is something that you were destined to do. All right, so continue to do that, y'all. All right, we're gonna keep it going. Uh, let's see who's next is next. Uh, the stack, the stack, the mic is yours. How you doing? The stack is actually the list. We have Crystal or Sammy on oh. the, in the stack. Oh, okay, my bad. I, I didn't know what the, you said. Stack. Oh, the list, the list would have helped me. <laughs> All right, Crystal, the mic is yours. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you. Um, my name is Crystal Schwedfeger, and I am with a um, nonprofit forensic nursing program called Bluebirds Hope um, in South Central Texas. Um, we're located in uh, multiple cities, um, trying to cover uh, five, six, seven, eight counties. Um, wow. We, yeah, we offer assistance to. Um, sexual assault survivors, um, domestic violence, survivors, human trafficking. So we try to cover the board for all survivors. Um, one thing that we do also do um, that I've kind of heard a little bit about on here is offer um, exams for those adults um, that have been assaulted as children um, and they, they never received an, an exam. Um, and that is so that they are able to tell their story. Um, and even though it has been a while, um, we always do offer um, testing and medications for sexually transmitted diseases. 
um, in case that is something that um, they want to have done um, for for medical reasons, of course, um, and for their safety. Um, so we offer we offer that. Um, so I chose I hear you. Um, and I am also um, a survivor. So um, I'm just going to put that out there. So I hear you that writing is powerful and that I have felt um, that in my past. Um, I do not currently make the time to write, but I believe that it would help me in my healing process as a survivor of child sexual abuse and domestic violence. I recently went to a women's retreat with my church where I was asked to do some journaling and it was amazing. It was like poetry flooding out of my heart and tears. I felt like I had some relief, but there is that word before relief, some. And it didn't last for more than a couple of days. Knowing it is because I haven't put Pen to paper since is a huge clue that I should be doing this daily, not yearly. I keep a schedule. Um, I see a counselor once a week. I keep the kids' doctor's appointments, game schedules, work meetings, educational sessions such as this, and so forth. And I should just be intentional and schedule my self-care with writing time. And so I hear you. I should do that. All right, all right. There you go. Hands, hands, hands. All right. Also, how'd that feel? How'd that feel, Crystal? Um, it felt good to write. Um, it did, and um, it felt um. How do I put it into it? Like in my face that you know that that's something that i just need to do yes ma'am and i and please, please keep doing it do not stop and keep doing the work that you do as well it's so important it's so vital you sharing your story and making sure that it goes hand in hand with self-care it just works so thank you so much i appreciate you sharing and again uh man thank you tasa for this opportunity to to allow these wonderful voices. I'm gonna tell you right now, any of you, if they go back and listen to the replays, uh, could be a speaker. I'm just letting you know, y'all are amazing. I am so inspired, I'm ready to write right now. So thank you again, I appreciate it. All right, we got one person left, y'all, one person left, and after that, I'll tell a short story, real short, and then we'll have a little Q&A. We're gonna finish on time, maybe a little early for lunch, I just want to respect your time, okay? And that's what advocacy is all about, respecting people's time and their stories. Sammy, the mic is yours. Hello, everyone. Uh, What's up? Thank you for having me. I want uh, to appreciate Tessa um, for creating this space for us. Okay. I didn't want to share because I've never been out officially. Um, but then I thought about it and I was like, what's the use of me being here and do not tell my story? So I'm going to come out officially. I'm a male survivor. I was raped and this happened about five years ago. Yeah. So, yeah, I'm coming out officially. Uh, my name is Samin Shadi. I work uh, with the University of Iowa as a campus advocate. The name of the agency I work for is called Rape Victim Advocacy and Prevention Program. Um, the prompt I chose is I'm here for you because it means a lot to me. Okay. When my world was turned upside down, when all that mattered to me meant nothing to me, when I didn't know who I was, 
I wished someone, like in that moment, all I needed, all I wanted was someone to say, I'm here for you. So thank you for this uh, prompt. Um, I want to proceed and say, I w I'm sorry to the survivors here. I congratulate you for being brave and sharing. I can't imagine what you went through and what you might be going through. However, I'm here to understand. I'm here for you and I'm not going anywhere. You matter. Whatever happened was not your fault. And the shame is on the abuser. Love and peace. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, Sammy. Thank you so much. Sammy, how you feel now? How man, you, your chat folks let it the chat is going crazy. They they they're showing you love in there. I want you to go back and check that out. Uh, that is confirmation that you are doing the right thing. And, and, and I hope that you feel in your heart that, you know, you're on your path to healing. So how does it feel? How did it feel just sharing just now to us? It feels wonderful. I feel, I feel much better. And yeah, this is really therapeutic. I feel, um, I'm beginning to heal from everything. This is how I feel. But that's a great feeling, isn't it? It is. Thank you so much, Sammy. Keep that going. Don't stop and keep writing, okay? Thank you. Everybody, that was Sammy. You heard Sammy. Y'all better show Sammy some love in that, love in that chat. It, it takes a lot to uh, publicly say for the first time ever, that is that first step. You know what I'm saying? And I, that's a powerful first step. You're getting a lot of love in the chat. We appreciate it. All right. Thank you to everybody. Now, before we turn it over to our uh, wonderful, esteemed TASA staff, who have done a great job. I'm thinking about uh, writing a grant just to hire them to come to uh, Dallas and do the same thing live. I don't know. I ain't got no, you know, I'm a social worker. I had no money. Um, but I'm going to share this story, my story. I wouldn't ask you to write stories if I wasn't able to to do it myself. So I'm going to share a short story. I believe that uh, Miliano has heard this before. Uh, a lot of you may not have. So here's my story, y'all. All right. And then after that, again, y'all are amazing. Y'all have done an amazing job. Thank you for trusting this processing, being a part of this part of this. Okay. Y'all are awesome. Thank you to everybody. Even those that show love and just listen and didn't leave. You stayed here. Thank you so much. Here it is. I had become an expert at fixing children who got left behind. Those who, like me, were once broken and blue. Now, every family has its skeletons, but our house was built entirely from generations of broken bones. And now I realize that I didn't choose social work. Social work chose me. See, when you're little, all you're supposed to know is cartoons, sunshine, Santa Claus, love. And why didn't he love us, protect us, Instead of being this crooked, shifting shadow with a soul as transparent as screen doors, wearing the stench of lust as loud as May blossoms. And there aren't enough blankets in the world to hide under when you live with the monster. He will find you. Growing up with a molested dignity is easy when you spent your childhood on your knees. And you think with my age and education, I would have worked it out by now. But how in the hell can a spirit rise when your head has been trained to stay down? He must have loved us, right? Right? So now I write like some prodigious savant scratching out words as loud as school bus breaks. I write because the memories that could have been will never be. And then I realized that it wasn't my fault that because of him, I became a verb in past tense, an unwilling subject in a sentence that kept on running. He crushed my innocence, killed any sense of normalcy. His kiss was a fist, was push, was punch, was choking. I was all that was. And then... There I was, wearing that shame, living that lie, an emotional misfit still asking why. 
My voice is as raspy as rusty trumpets now. Gray hair pushes through charred skin to expose this old man. Here I am, y'all. Someone please show me what love is because I'm tired of pretending I know. And how could I when my only lessons in manhood was swallowing his pride and this is why I spit. Do you know how it feels to be your own private mausoleum? To want to sleep and dream and wake up smiling again? Is that asking too much? Tell me what I did not to deserve that, because I'm still back there, drunk from whiskey scented whispers, held hostage by sweaty palms, an emotional magician, an expert at disappearing until today. We all got secrets. But for once, I just want to feel safe. I'm a man and I'm tired of running. Hell yes, I have scars and I will never be the same, but I'm still here and I'm taking back my life. So that something as simple as keeping a job, protecting my kids, providing for my family, loving my wife, ceases to be a post-traumatic struggle. I just want to hold my head up again. For every child who's been broken and blue, I fight for you because I'm still fighting for me. This is more than just a story. This is my life. And I'm tired, so tired of being the oldest little boy in the world. There's my story, y'all, in a nutshell. Thank you so much. Thank y'all. All right, I'm gonna turn it over. Thank y'all so much. Um, man, um, I appreciate everybody. Uh, Emiliano, the, the mic is yours. Thank you. Oh, thank you, Michael. Uh, I just wanna just take a moment to, to thank you for facilitating the, this tremendous sharing, right? That making it possible for folks to, to share their story uh, and for leading by example, by sharing your story. So um, yeah, thank you for that. And thank you to everyone who, who shared their story, who was brave enough to share it in front of 150 people. Um, knowing that it's gonna be recorded and shared later on, I, you know, somebody made a comment that uh, you never know who it may help, right? Just in terms of our stories, like the more that we open up and share our stories, the, the less that we feel alone. And uh, especially for male survivors, that's, that's really important. I think you've given us a lot of tools and a lot to think about um in terms of providing support i do want to remind folks because of that level of sharing because some of us may have been impacted or uh by what was shared or are sharing our own story to please reach out to tanya she is still available she will be available throughout the day if you need support right now or at any point um please reach out to tanya um so I definitely want to encourage you to take care of yourself and to use this time to take a breather, to walk away, to take a walk, to have some lunch, to uh, you know reach out to friends and family, um, to do whatever you need to do to take care of yourself before we come back this afternoon. Um, yeah, let's take some questions. We have about ten, you know, a little bit less than ten minutes, and so if folks have any questions that they want to that they want to ask Michael, definitely this is the time to do that. And Michael, if you want to drop any of your contact information, please do that. Um, Melanie dropped a really great resource earlier and just right now in terms of um, self-care resources, like a 10 minute mindful breathing. So use that if you need to. We definitely want to encourage people to take care of themselves. So uh, yeah, if you have any questions, um, please feel free to drop them in the chat and we'll see, we'll, we'll take as many as we can here. Um, so we respect people's time for lunch. I told you, I usually, I usually, I, these things pretty much answer themselves. They check all the boxes and, uh, I really love doing, doing, you know, workshops like these. Uh, and I appreciate the opportunity and the trust. You didn't know what I was going to do. Um, and you trusted me. And I that that right there, man, I means a lot to me. So thank you so much, Emiliano and Tasso staff, for just trusting me to just be myself and, and bring what I do in real life to, to this platform. So thank you. Yeah, if folks don't have any questions, of course, you can you can you can definitely reach out to Michael. He's He's dropped his contact information there in the chat. So feel free to reach out to him. He's definitely accessible and he's available uh, for other speaking engagements for facilitating these types of workshops with your clients, with survivors, et cetera, with community members, young people. He's done, he's done everything. Um, so definitely reach out to Michael if he can if he can be of any support. It's a little heavy, right? Take a breath. Yeah. Take, take 